Greetings, mother factors. My name's Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the upcoming sci-fi bonanza that is Solo, colon, a Star Wars story. Yep, everyone's favourite space rogue has only gone and gotten himself an origin movie, the jammy so-and-so. What an absolute lad. I'm also honoured to be joined by the guys over at Star Wars Explained, but I'll let them introduce themselves, because I'm a gentleman. What's up, guys? Our channel is your one-stop shop for everything Star Wars. From careful analysis of expansive Star Wars lore to which cantina has the best Thala Siren milk. Be sure to click the card in the corner to subscribe. But in the meantime, what did Donald Glover do after being cast as Lando Calrissian? Which actor in the movie apparently has a big collection of Han Solo toys? And why didn't Jack Porkins get his own origin movie, huh? Favoritism, pure favoritism. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so set your faces to stun, laugh at all the nerds I just infuriated with that joke, and prepare yourselves for 101 facts about Solo, a Star Wars story. Number one. Solo, a Star Wars story, often referred to simply as Solo, is an upcoming American sci-fi film focusing on Han Solo, who, in case you've been comatose for about for ages, is a character from the iconic Star Wars franchise. Number two. The film is directed by Ron Howard, the voice of Arrested Development, and has been produced by Lucasfilm from a screenplay by father and son Lawrence and Jonathan Kasdan. It's also being distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures, because, well, obviously. Number three. Solo is the second instalment in the Star Wars anthology series, following on from the release of Rogue One in 2016. An as yet untitled third instalment in the series is set to be released in 2020. Ooh, come on, Jar Jar Binks origin movie. Number four. Solo is a standalone film set prior to the events of Rogue One and the original 1977 film. The film will explore the backstory and many adventures of Han Solo and Chewbacca in their younger years, so expect shoulder pads and afros. Number five. Thanks to a timeline from Random House's Del Rey books, we actually have a pretty accurate idea of exactly when Solo is set. The film takes place between the events of Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One in the Star Wars timeline, several years before the start of the Star Wars Rebels TV series. One of the trailers for Solo helped place the film at about 10 years before the events of the original trilogy. Oh, great! Number six. The plot of Solo spans a fairly substantial six years, the longest time frame of any Star Wars movie. Hopefully it doesn't feel like it's six years long, though. Number seven. Despite its obvious sci-fi credentials, Solo has been specifically described as a space western, owing to its fusion of typical western characteristics and space. Number eight. According to the writers at Disney and Lucasfilm, the Han Solo movie is the weirdest Star Wars film ever. Really, really Disney and Lucasfilm. Weirder than Luke Skywalker milking an alien and immediately drinking its raw green alien boob juice. Sure. Number nine. The film stars American actor Alden Ehrenreich in the title role, joined by an ensemble starry cast featuring Amelia Clarke, Queen of Dragons, Woody Harrelson, King of Green Plants, Donald Glover, King of, well, everything these days, Paul Bettany, King of Portraying an Android, Tandy Newton, Queen of Portraying a, kind of, Android, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Queen of Being a Flea Bag? Hmm, that's a good royal ensemble. Number 10. Star Wars creator George Lucas first imagined a live-action depiction of young Han Solo during the pre-production of Star Wars Episode III Revenge of the Sith. Lucas considered showing Solo as a child on Kashyyyk, with Chewbacca raising him like a son. Number 11. Writer Lawrence Kasdan has stated that he was initially reluctant to take on the project, but ultimately decided he wanted to do the Han Solo movie because Solo is his favourite character. Meanwhile, Jack Porkins and Jar Jar Binks continue to languish in obscurity. <sighs> Not cool, guys. Number 12. However, after agreeing to join the project, Kasdan was also asked to help develop what would ultimately become Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens, after which he says he felt creatively drained. As a result, he asked his son John to assist in developing the Han Solo film. Nepotism. Number 13. Lawrence and John Kasdan have said that they drew inspiration for the film from a number of sources, including Treasure Island, Heat, and Unforgiven, as well as various films by the Coen brothers like the 1998 crime comedy classic The Big Lebowski. Number 14. Solo will be the fourth time that Lawrence Kasdan has worked on the Star Wars film franchise, as he was a screenwriter for The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and The Force Awakens. Number 15. Sadly, Lawrence Kasdan has also announced that writing the Han Solo movie will be his final foray into the Star Wars universe. Number 16. American director Josh Trank had originally signed on to direct the second Star Wars anthology film, but eventually dropped out following the extremely negative response to his most recent film, Fanforstic. 
Trank has blamed the poor quality of the film on meddling from Fox. Sounds like an excuse, but also happens to be kind of maybe believable. Anyway, the film's a mess. Number 17. Principal photography began in January 2017 at Pinewood Studios in London, under the direction of Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Now you may be thinking, what? That's not Ron Howard, but we'll get there. In fact, we'll get there right now. The pair were reportedly fired in June of 2017 over creative differences with Lucasfilm, and veteran director Ron Howard took over as the project's director. Number 18. Ron Howard's acceptance of the offer to direct may come as a surprise to some given the fact that he famously turned down George Lucas's offer to direct The Phantom Menace, saying it was just too daunting of a task. Howard has clearly had a change of heart, stating that he was beyond grateful to direct Solo. Number 19. According to Lord and Miller, they were under the impression that they were hired to make a comedy film, while Lucasfilm merely wanted them to add a comedic touch to the space western they had planned. Their disagreement proved insurmountable, forcing the pair off the project and back into obscurity like Jack Goddamn Porkins. Number 20. In pursuit of the comedy film that they thought they were making, Lord and Miller also encouraged the actors to improvise on set, which Lucasfilm did not like one bit, believing the pair were shifting the story off course. Awkward. Number 21. After Lucasfilm parted ways with Lord and Miller, Lawrence Kasdan was also considered to step in as director, but he was prevented from doing so by stipulations from the Directors Guild of America which state that a replacement director cannot be someone already involved in the production. This rule is in place to stop producers and actors from forcing directors out and taking over the film. Number 22... Not surprisingly, the question of who would be stepping into Han Solo's shoes generated a storm of wild speculation. In January 2016, a shortlist of actors was revealed, including but not limited to Ansel Elgort, King of Ah, oh, not doing that again, Dave Franco, Blake Jenner, Taron Egerton, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Rami Malek, Tom Felton, Colton Haynes, and Jack O'Connell. However, ultimately, as we all know, it went to Aaron Reich. Number 23. Lord and Miller have revealed that when they were casting the role of Han Solo, they saw over 3,000 people for the part, calling it one of the hardest casting decisions of all time. Number 24. Funnily enough, though, Aaron Reich was literally the very first actor to audition for Lord and Miller. The pair have said that while they liked a lot of the other actors they went with, they ultimately concluded that the first guy they saw was the best for the part. Number 25. Luckily, Alden Ehrenreich happened to be a huge fan of the Star Wars franchise and appears to have an affinity for his own character in particular, owing to the existence of his own personal collection of Han Solo toys. Number 26. There was a small online campaign to get Jamie Costa, who portrayed Han Solo in the short film Han Solo A Smuggler's Trade, to play Han Solo in this film. Costa, who has become known online as an actor and impressionist, even posted a video of himself auditioning for the role on YouTube. Number 27. In order to prepare for the role, Aaron Reich actually met with the original Han Solo actor, Harrison Ford. The meeting allowed Ford to pass on some insight into his iconic character and some words of advice about how to inhabit the role. Basically, don't go on space bridges where there's no railings with your angry son. Number 28. Producer Kathleen Kennedy even stated that there were several times in the course of the film's production when Aaron Reich specifically recounted some of the things that Ford told him, stating that she thought that the meeting was really, really helpful to Aaron Reich. So, thanks, Fordy. Number 29. When asked how the Han Solo of this film differs from the Han Solo of other Star Wars films, Aaron Reich stated that the main difference is that in this installment, Solo is more of an idealist. Solo has yet to become overwhelmingly cynical and world-weary, and will face obstacles far harder and more challenging than he'd ever initially expected. Number 30. In early 2018, it was confirmed that Solo's longtime companion, the Wookiee known as Chewbacca, would be appearing in the film. Since then, sources have indicated that Han and Chewie would be seen butting heads in the film, not literally, but that their famous friendship will endure. In fact, Lawrence has even suggested that the film will be somewhat of a bromance. Number 31. Jonas Suetamo, the Finnish basketball player who appeared in The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and now Solo, wrote a heartfelt letter to Peter Mayhew, the original Chewbacca. Suetamo thanked Lucasfilm, Disney, and Star Wars fans, but especially Mayhew himself. Number 32. A number of early reports tease several actors for the role of Lando Calrissian. Michael B. Jordan, O'Shea Jackson Jr., and Yaya Abdul-Mateen II were all rumoured for the role, before it was ultimately given to the multi-talented Donald Glover. Number 33. Glover has stated that when he found out he'd been cast in the film, he immediately grabbed a pizza and watched Lando's first appearance in The Empire Strikes Back, before moving on to other 70s titles to inspire his performance. Number 34. 
Additionally, after Glover was announced as Lando, Lord and Miller released an online statement congratulating him on securing the role and jokingly apologizing for ruining Comic-Con for him forever. Number 35. Lando is accompanied by a brand new Star Wars robot in the form of Lady Droid L337. The voice of the self-made automaton is provided by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, whom company fans may recognize from the uber-depressing but super funny critically acclaimed British TV series Fleabag, which is why I said Fleabag earlier, by the way. Number 36. The name of Lando's droid, L337, is often shortened to just the first two letters, L and 3, although they're not both letters, one of them's a number. The spelling of the whole name is a reference to L337, an internet-based practice of modifying the spelling of words to include numbers or characters from foreign languages. Number 37. The film will also feature Kira, a new character played by the one and only Amelia Clark. Despite the strange spelling, it's pronounced like Kira, which was incidentally the original name for Rey from the Star Wars sequels. Number 38. Actresses who were rumored to be taking on the character included Tessa Thompson, Naomi Scott, Zoe Kravitz, Kiersey Clemens, Jessica Henwick, and Adria Arjom. Until it was announced in late 2016 that Amelia Clark had won the role. Jennifer Lawrence could have totally been Kira easily. She just, just didn't want to, I, I imagine. Number 39. At the time the film is set, Kira is Solo's oldest companion, having both grown up struggling to survive on the streets of Corellia. Their rapport in the trailer has led many to speculate whether Kira serves as a prototype for Leia. Number 40. With her appearance in Solo, Amelia Clarke will be the 11th actor from the smash hit Gore Orgy or Gorgie, that is Game of Thrones, to appear in the Star Wars film franchise. Number 41. Woody Harrelson will appear in the film as Tobias Beckett, a criminal and Han's mentor. Early fan speculation suggested that Harrelson would be playing Garrus Shrike, Han Solo's mentor in the Star Wars Legends continuity, before Harrelson revealed his character's name on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. The meaning of life. However, Harrelson wasn't the only big shot Hollywood star who was considered for the role of Tobias Beckett. Christian Bale had also been in discussions for the role too, but then probably got angry about the lighting or something. Number 43. The character of Beckett is partially inspired by Long John Silver from Robert Louis Stevenson's classic Treasure Island. Silver's relationship towards Jim Hawkins is mirrored in the uncle-type role Beckett plays in Solo's early days. Number 44. Similarly, Solo's relationship with Beckett has been likened to that of the relationship between Val Kilmer's and Bobby De Niro's characters in Michael Mann's 1995 crime drama Heat. Number 45. Incidentally, Solo is Woody Harrelson's second time appearing in a Ron Howard-directed film. Harrison also appeared in the lofty role of Audition Guy in the 1999 American satirical comedy film Ed TV. Number 46. The film also stars Paul Bettany as Dryden Voss, a crime lord and one of the film's main antagonists. The role was originally played by American actor Michael K. Williams, but he was removed from the final film as he was unable to return to set for reshoots. Bettany was cast in his place, and the character was reworked from a motion capture alien to a scar-covered human. Number 47. Paul Bettany's appearance in the film makes him one of two members of the main cast who has appeared in both the Star Wars and Marvel franchises. Bettany's appeared before as Jarvis, the suit AI voice for Iron Man, before becoming the Vision in Avengers Age of Ultron, whereas Donald Glover starred as criminal Aaron Davis in Spider-Man Homecoming. Number 48. Solo also constitutes the second time Bettany's worked with Ron Howard, since appearing as Charles in Howard's A Beautiful Mind. Number 49. Tandy Newton, known recently for her role on the sci-fi TV series Westworld, also nabbed herself a role as the calm and collected individual known as Val. Little is known about Val other than she looks cool AF. Number 50. Howard has also confirmed that his brother, the ubiquitous Clint Howard, will also make an appearance. When someone on Twitter asked him whether or not his sibling would be seen in the film, Howard responded, you won't be disappointed. Clint Howard has made numerous appearances in his brother's films, including Grand Theft Auto, Cocoon, Apollo 13, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Cinderella Man, and Frost Nixon. But which is the better Howard, Ron or Clint? Let us know in our fancy YouTube poll. Number 51. English actor Warwick Davis has also been cast in an undisclosed role. Davis is known for portraying Wicked the Ewok in the 1983 film Return of the Jedi from the original Star Wars trilogy. Number 52. Additionally, Marvel juggernaut Jon Favreau will also be appearing in Solo, providing the voice for, and I'm quoting verbatim here, a very cool and important alien character. Number 53. In late 2017, it was announced that Lawrence Kasdan's son and co-writer John Kasdan and the first assistant director Toby Hefferman would portray Tag and Bink in the film. The characters of Tag and Bink first appeared in the Star Wars comics published by Dark Horse Comics. 
Their original stories were explicitly non-canon, so their inclusion in the film and effective canonization is a big deal. Number 54 Interestingly, the film's former co-director Christopher Miller actually has a past with Star Wars in an on-screen capacity. Miller played a stormtrooper during additional filming for the 1997 release of The Empire Strikes Back. Number 55 Solo would have been the second film directed by Lord and Miller that features the characters of Han Solo and Lando Calrissian. The first, in case you were wondering, was, hilariously, the Lego movie. Number 56 Solo constitutes Ron Howard's fourth time working with Lucasfilm, following his roles in American Graffiti in 1973 and More American Graffiti in 1979, as well as Willow in 1988, which he directed. Number 57 Interestingly, Ron Howard's appearance in American Graffiti also provides a connection to not only George Lucas, but the original Han Solo, Harrison Ford, who also appeared in the film. Number 58 Solo is also the first movie that Ron Howard has directed that wasn't also produced by his longtime producing partner, Brian Grazer, since his debut film, Grand Theft Auto, all the way back in 1977. Number 59 With Ron Howard at the helm, Solo A Star Wars Story also constitutes the first time an Academy Award winning director has ever made a Star Wars film. Number 60 Howard has confirmed that the Kessel Run will be featured in the film, generating much speculation from hardcore Star Wars fans. The Kessel Run is a hyperspace route that Han Solo famously boasted about having traversed in less than 12 parsecs. The show off. Number 61. According to, um, online buzz, it's highly likely that the film will depict Solo's encounter with Lando Calrissian, in which he acquires the Millennium Falcon. It's Nerd Christmas, everybody. Nerd Christmas. Number 62. Another rumor regarding the film suggests that Solo may include an appearance from none other than Jabba the Chuffing Hutt. It's going harder than the nostalgia, guys. Real hard. Number 63. The working title for Solo was Star Wars colon Red Cup, which is a very funny reference if you're a teen American. If not, let me fill in why. It's a reference to those snazzy red cups that all American college kids drink out of at house parties, if movies are to be believed. Nintendo 64. That being said, Solo wasn't even the definite title for the film for a significant period in its production. In July of 2017, Harrelson revealed on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert that Solo was only a temporary title at the time. But a few months later in October, Ron Howard confirmed that the movie would indeed be called Solo. Number 65 On the first day of filming, Chris Miller tweeted out a photo with a clapperboard featuring the caption Han First Shot. This is a nice little reference to the long-standing controversy regarding changes that Lucas made to the special edition re-release of Star Wars. Number 66 in addition to filming in the UK, filming for Solo also took place in a variety of exotic locations, including the Spanish island of Fortaventura in the Canary Islands and the rugged mountainous landscapes of Trasime de Lavarido in northeastern Italy. Number 67 Awkwardly, Lucasfilm were apparently not super impressed with Aaron Reich's performance as Han Solo. In fact, they were so worried that they even hired an acting coach for him. Ordinarily, this wouldn't be that unusual, but hiring a coach fairly late on in production is pretty uncommon and not a great sign. Number 68 Interestingly, Star Wars creator George Lucas, who is a friend and mentor of Howard, made a surprise visit to the set on his first day shooting. The visit was originally meant to be fairly short, but Lucas ended up spending the whole day there, and even gave suggestions that ended up making it into the final film. Number 69... Shoot fast. Although Howard was originally brought on board to complete the film that Lord and Miller had started, it was reported in late 2017 that they had reshot more than 80% of the movie. Number 70. The music of Solo was produced by John Powell, who has scored several popular movies such as the 2011 Parrot Caper Rio, DreamWorks Animation's How to Train Your Dragon, and the Matt Damon spy romp The Bourne Identity. Number 71. This means that John Powell is the third composer to work on a Star Wars film after the ubiquitous John Williams. There's also Michael Giacchino, who produced the soundtrack for Rogue One. Number 72. However, the film's main theme has been created by John Williams, and all was right with the world. Number 73. The film is set to be released in the US on the 25th of May, which happens to be the same date on which the very first Star Wars film was released all the way back in 1977. I told you, nostalgia. Number 74. Before the official release date, Solo A Star Wars Story debuted at the Cannes Film Festival on the 15th of May, 2018. Number 75. Solo will also be the first Star Wars movie to be released in May since Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, all the way back in 2005. Yeah, I know. Mind-blowing, right? These Number 76. You're looking for. To promote the film, a sneak peek TV spot was released during the 2018 Superb Owl, an annual tournament featuring the American sport of hand egg. It emerged as the most popular Super Bowl trailer, racking up 8 million views on YouTube and 5.9 million views on Facebook. Number 77. The teaser also appears to show a genuine, bona fide car chase. 
High-speed chases have occurred before in the Star Wars films. For instance, Attack of the Clones featured an airspeeder chase, but this one appears to be the first ground-based land speeder chase for the franchise. Number 78. If you look closely at the shots of Han's land speeder in the teasers and trailer, you can see a pair of gold dice dangling from the windshield. These are the same ones that make it on the Millennium Falcon, as seen in the original trilogy. Nice. Number 79. At one point in the trailer, the back of Solo's land speeder can be seen showing its jets glowing a luminous red. Car nerds have been pointing out the striking similarity of the vehicle's colour and design to that of Fords from the 1960s. The one Ford in particular that appears to closely match the futuristic auto is none other than the Ford Falcon. Get it? Ford Falcon. Harrison Ford Millennium Falcon. Number 80. There's a moment in the trailer in which the Millennium Falcon can be seen flying between an array of enormous tentacles. Some have speculated that these appendages belong to a pergirl, a species of massive squid whale creatures that inhabit deep space, and have the natural ability to travel through hyperspace. Yep, space whales that travel faster than light. This is all in the Star Wars world, by the way, they don't, they don't exist. Or at least I don't think they do. Number 81. One interesting difference in the Millennium Falcon that can be seen in the trailer is the tip of the ship's nose. The classic Falcon design has a two-point tip, whereas in the trailer, that space is filled in. Some sources state that this is actually part of the cargo hold that was jettisoned at some point in between the two timelines. Number 82. The trailers also feature interior shots of the Millennium Falcon, which are striking for how pristine and white everything is. In the original trilogy, the inside of Solo's ship has turned a grimy shade of yellowish brown, presumably due to years of neglect. Gross. Number 83. At one point in the trailer, Chewbacca relates to Solo that he is 190 years old. This would put Chewie comfortably into his mid-200s during the sequels. Considering the fact that Wookiees tend to live until they're about 400 years old, we can deduce that Chewbacca is roughly middle-aged. Number 84. Another moment shows Chewbacca with an unknown Wookiee who appears to be a member of his family. Some have speculated this could be Chewbacca's wife, Malatabak, or his son, Lumpamaru. Number 85. Han Solo is known for his characteristic blaster gun, which can actually be seen in the trailer. Look, there it is. A moment featuring Beckett and Solo convening around a campfire shows the latter being given his famous blaster by his mentor. Number 86. The trailer also features a spinning train vehicle that looks like it would instantly induce vomiting from the most experienced seafarers. This rotating monstrosity is called the Convey X, and appears to be the site of a daring heist. Four. Number 87. At one point, Beckett gives Solo some sage advice, saying, Assume everyone will betray you and you'll never be disappointed. This could be an oblique reference to a future betrayal that Solo would suffer later on in his life. I wonder who could be responsible for such treachery. Hmm. Number 88. Another nice reference to the original Han Solo can be heard when Aaron Reich utters the line, I've got a really good feeling about this, which constitutes a fun little inversion of the phrase, I have a really bad feeling about this, that pops up in every Star Wars film. This seems to be punctuating Solo's previously optimistic personality that he has since lost by the time of the original trilogy. Number 89. Another prominent figure in the trailers is Enfys Nest, a mysterious marauder character wearing Mandalorian armor who leads a gang of pirates known as the Cloud Riders, which sounds actually quite nice. Number 90. The name of Enfys Nest was leaked prior to the official announcement due to promotional material slipping out online. Damn you, Internet. This is why we can't have nice things. It's also why I can have a job, though, so thanks, Internet. Number 91. In March of 2018, a French artist by the name of Hashim Bahous claimed that Disney had plagiarized their character posters from a series of album covers he designed for Sony Music's label, Legacy Recordings. Disney later stated that they were investigating the allegations and claimed that the posters in question had been produced by a third party. Yeah, yeah. Number 92. In the same month, Disney also announced that it would be altering the film's Brazilian poster to remove the blasters in order to present a more family-friendly image. Number 93. In the lead-up to the film's release, EA Capital Games announced that characters from the film would become collectible and playable in the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. These include Eren Reich's younger Han Solo and Chewbacca as they appear in the film. And knowing EA probably cost about $99 each. Number 94. For the film's marketing, Lucasfilm arranged licensing deals with a number of companies, including Esurance, General Mills, Nissan, Solo Cup Company, so they did there, and Symantec. All the sexiest brands. Additionally, the French car manufacturer Renault aired an advert showcasing the film's train sequence, and Denny's produced one that utilized props, characters, and a set from Solo. Number 95. Along with the film comes a variety of different other Star Wars titles that supplement the cinematic narratives. This includes Star Wars novels like Last Shot by author Daniel Jose Older, which tells a story connecting three eras in the lives of Solo and Calrissian. Number 96. 
Most Wanted, another solo novel written by Ray Carson, focuses on Solo and Kira during their teenage years. Back when they were studying for tests on space maths, hanging out at the space mall, and going to space house parties with other space friends. I imagine. Number 97. Space. Lando, Double or Nothing is a Marvel Comics miniseries from Rothney Barnes that focuses on an incident involving Lando that occurs right before the film, providing backstory regarding Lando and his droid L3. Number 98. The Art of Solo by Phil Zostak is a staggeringly beautiful art book that contains various examples of concept art that was produced for the film. The artwork depicts the evolution of Solo's aesthetic and will be a must-buy for true Star Wars fans. You hear that? Only true fans, I tell you. Number 99. There's also a solo colouring book for children who are far too cool to be interested in mushy young adult novels or nerdy comic books. Interestingly, the cover of the solo colouring book features an unidentified droid. Imagine being leaked by a colouring book. The utter indignity of that. Don't get cocky, kid. It's number 100. If you thought a solo colouring book sounded badass, then you're going to be gobsmacked by the existence of an upcoming sticker book based on Solo A Star Wars Story. I know, I know, I literally just wet myself. This fact at the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs. Number 101. Oh jeez, I hate myself. Trading card company tops have also produced a set of, you guessed it, trading cards based on Solo 2. So there you go. If any of those companies want to give me any free stuff for selling their products, I mean, please do. I've got nothing else going on in my life. Anyway, so that was 101 Facts About Solo, A Star Wars Story. First things first, thank you to Star Wars Explained for joining me on this epic journey. You can check out their channel in the description down below. Be sure to subscribe and get your Star Wars fix. They do some really great stuff. In the meantime though, let me know what you want to see next from 101 Facts, and click on one of these two videos now, and you're going to really enjoy at least one of them. That's my guarantee. I've got a good feeling about this. Bye!